We have the results in from the UK election, the final results. This, of course, happened a few days back, but this is the first show we've done since we got the results. Um, and it is, it's not pretty. It is not pretty for the left. So BBC News breaks this down here. You have the Conservatives uh, have 365 seats in Parliament. That's plus 47. Plus 47. That's a massive. The Labour Party, 203 seats. They lost 59. That's a huge defeat, guys. Then you have SNP, I think Scottish, Scottish National Party, plus 13. And then you have the Lib Dems with uh, 11. Um, Lib Dems there are, are like a centrist party. Um, they lost a seat. So, well, why did they lose? Well, first, before I weigh in on it, let's go to the man himself who was leading the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn. Now, bef actually, before we hear from him, Let's just get all the facts out there. In 2017, he led the Labor Party to historic wins. They had the biggest gains they've had in decades, if I remember correctly, because I remember covering it at the time. So Labor Party, led by Jeremy Corbyn, was massively successful in the 2017 elections. What happened? Well, let's see what Corbyn thinks, and then I'll weigh in. Obviously very sad at the result we've achieved and very sad at those colleagues that uh, lost their seats in the election and very sad for many people in this country who will now have a government that is uh, continuing policies of austerity and many of the poorest communities I think will suffer very badly from the economic strategy that I suspect the Prime Minister will take forward. But okay. also I have pride in our manifesto that we put forward and all the policies we put forward, which actually had huge public support on issues of universal credit, the green industrial revolution, and investment for the future. But this election was taken over, ultimately, by Brexit, and we as a party represent people who both voted Remain and Leave, and my whole strategy was to reach out beyond the Brexit divide to try and bring people together, uh, because ultimately the country has to come together. So what went wrong? Well, those in leave areas, in some numbers, voted for Brexit or Conservative candidates, which meant that we lost a number of seats and we didn't make the gains that I'd hoped we could have done, particularly in the uh, Midlands and Yorkshire in the north. So that's his interpretation of why the Labour Party lost. Um... Is he correct? Well, I think he's, he's at least partly correct. So when it comes to Brexit, the Labour Party took the position previously of, we got to honor the vote. The British people voted. They said, we want to do Brexit. We want to leave the European Union. And so what am I going to do? I believe in democracy. I believe in the voice of the people. So it is what it is. We got to honor it. This time around, that was not their position. He changed his position, and his position was, uh, let's have another referendum. Let's have another referendum. Now, again, he said that was his attempt to, like, appease both Remainers who don't want to leave the EU and people who are for Brexit. That was his attempt to, like, marry them and say, like, oh, yeah, I kind of agree with both of you. Like, we'll have one more vote, and if that vote says leave then we'll leave, but if it doesn't, then we'll stay. You don't really get to press the button and do a do-over on democracy. Even if you massively disagree with the conclusion, it is what it is. I mean, it's sort of a matter of principle that, well, if the people say it, what are we going to do? You can't just override it. That's authoritarian by definition. So, now, by the way, that's not, that's not me weighing in on the substance of remain or leave. It's not. Because I, I've actually seen really convincing arguments on both sides of that. And I don't know how I would have voted if I was in the UK in Brexit. Um, you have the people who want to remain accuse all the people who want to leave of like, it's all, they're all racist and it's all over, um, you know, immigration. But that's not really the only thing it's over. You have many people who are on the left in the Labour Party, like George Galloway, for example, who's for leave as well. So, you know, you had people on the right who were for leave, or, or excuse me, yeah, leave, but you also had people on the left who were for leave, and that was, that was the conundrum that Jeremy Corbyn found himself in, in is that you had people on the right were 
to some extent unified on the issue, or at least more so than the Labor Party. Whereas people in the Labor Party were split, and so he was trying to represent both camps as much as possible. And that definitely hurt him. And you could tell there he gave the specifics too as to, oh, we calculated that in this area we would win more as a result of our position, and maybe this area we would lose some, but we'd make up for it. So they had the calculations, but they were just wrong. And there were many former labor strongholds in rural areas that flipped to conservative. And their main reason was Brexit. And what you have to understand is the conservatives at least make head fakes and at least make overtures to populist ideas in the UK. Their conservatives are a hell of a lot different than our conservatives. That's not me saying I would agree with their conservatives, because I don't. But they, at the very least, they have to make head fakes and they have to be like, Oh, yeah, no, of course, I support the NHS, of course I do. What are you, crazy? I want to increase spending to the NHS. So, um, when you mix in the united opposition in favor of Brexit leaving the EU, you mix that in with populist head fakes, yeah, you could see how Labour loses that election. So Brexit is probably the main issue here. And by the way, now it should be any person who controls the Labour Party from here on out. It is what it is, man. You got to say we're pro-Brexit. Now we would negotiate a Brexit deal on our terms. And our terms would be better for the workers than the terms of the Conservatives. So, I mean, that that's the position I think the Labour Party should take now. We're going to honor Brexit and we want to negotiate a really good deal on our terms, which is good for working people uh, in the UK. That's what I think uh, the Labour Party should do from here on out. But there's also one other reason why Jeremy Corbyn lost, which is the relentless smear campaign against him. I mean, we can't talk about the election without talking about that as well. And, you know, we've covered it on this show. That's how big of a story it is, is that we, I don't even cover a lot of UK politics. I don't. I do it every now and then. But, like, that story was so big, and it got so absurd that I had to cover it on this show. Where every day, oh my god, anti-Semite, 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 anti-Semite. Every day they call him an anti-Semite. And it's like, well, hold on now. Everybody on the right always pretends. Like, <laughs> who, us, bro? Listen, we don't play identity politics. We don't do smears based on flimsy evidence, okay? That's what, like, the left wing does. And then the second they think they could come up with some smear campaign that will be effective, anti-Semite! Anti-Semite, 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 anti-Semite. Did I mention anti-Semite? Anti-Semite. So, yeah, when you call them that day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. And, of course, in the weeks leading up to the election, what do they do? Uh, McCarthyite smears. Trying to time to Russia. It, like, it's the same freaking playbook everywhere, man. It's the same playbook they use against the left. It's insane. Um, so, it stuck. And listen, I have to say, man, there is a lesson for Bernie Sanders to take out of this. I didn't hear much of a fight back from Corbyn and his team. I didn't. I don't know why. I think maybe they probably calculated um, they're not going to land anyway, these smears. So just leave them be. But you got to aggressively fight back. And I hate to make the comparison, but I make it because it's true. Who's the politician in modern American history who most directly takes on the media. Trump. <laughs> and it works. I just told you. Guys, 41%, this is a Gallup tracking poll, 41% of the country trust the media. 41%! That's not high at all! 41%! <laughs> what percentage um, trust them a, quote, great deal? 13%. Donald Trump is more popular than the media. So no wonder he takes them on like crazy and calls them fake, new fake news and calls everything a witch hunt and a hoax. Because he knows he has more... He's more trusted than them. Now, you know, if everybody has this default interpretation, this perception of the media as, like, lying smear merchant losers, yeah, go after them. Now, I don't know if the situation is exactly the same in the UK. I would imagine it's not, because their people tend to ask better questions and all that stuff, as we've seen on the show before with Andrew Neal and others, but you have to, you can't just take it laying down. You have to fight back, you have to fight back aggressively, and yes, after you fight back, then you drop it. You set the record straight, then you drop it. You don't dwell on something. Fight it back, fight back, drop it, and then move on, but I didn't sense much of that. It, all day long, anti-Semite, 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 smear you, Marxist, uh, Russian, this and that, and it... it 
I hope this doesn't stick. Oh my god, don't no, don't let that happen. So between Brexit and the relentless smears and the fact that the conservatives have to do populist head fakes, yeah, labor got their booties handed to them on a platter. So it is what it is. Lick your wounds for a day or two and move on. And now, and listen, when it comes to the manifesto, and Corbyn goes on to make this point too. And actually, we I think we covered the manifesto on this show because it was so good. Jimmy Dore covered it on his show because it was so good. It was amazing. The, the manifesto was superb. So the only thing I would change moving forward is you fight back against the media when they smear you and you change your Brexit position to tough cookies. The people voted were pro-Brexit, end of conversation. And we'll, we want to negotiate a Brexit deal on our terms that's a good deal for workers. That's it. Those are the only things I would change. That's the only thing I would change. And I think that that would change the outcome. Um, but what do I know? I'm just a loudmouth YouTuber.